Alright guys, welcome back to another vin video on MMA on Hinge. Today we are joined by UFC Bantamweight, Randy Costa. How's it going, buddy? I'm doing good, man. I appreciate you having me on. Yeah, it's glad to have you on. You know, you told me that uh, just before we got onto the interview that, you know, the COVID and the symptoms, I hope you're feeling better now. We can hope to see your fight soon. Uh, I think it was uh, January, February, March. March, uh, UFC 259 on the Megan Anderson versus Anderson uh, undercard, I think you'll be. Yeah, well, oh, I don't, know if, I'm on the I don't mm -hmm. know if I'm on the undercard yet, but yeah, I think I think she's the headliner, but I'm not certain. Um, I saw her fight was announced, but mm -hmm. it ha it doesn't seem like they've kind of alluded to that being the main event yet. Um, but we'll see. I, I know that they're targeting um, Stipe versus uh, Naganu for March, so Ooh. that could be the headliner. I don't know anything. Yeah. I know just as much as you guys, so we'll see. Yeah, also, uh, Dana White recently announced uh, the return to Fight Island. And, uh, would that have been something you would have loved to have been on, you know, Fight Island in Abu Dhabi? Would I like to? Yeah. Um, it, it would be cool, man, but, like, I, I want to travel and, like, see all these places and all that, but, like, Fight Island really isn't even Dubai, right? Because you're locked in one area, everyone's speaking English, yeah. and... You know, you're you're set in a a certain radius, like a ten mile radius or twenty mile radius. So it's yeah, not even no really no one's allowed in that bubble, or no one's allowed. No, out. man, it's, yeah. it's 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 pretty much taking Las Vegas and putting it, <laughs> fucking eighteen hours away on an airplane. You know, it's it's it'd be cool, but I'm not really like dying to go there. If it were regular Dubai and like things were wide open, I would be jumping at the bit. But this is not, mm -hmm. it's not really that cool to me. You get that. You get that business flight, though. A lot of people get on that business flight. You get that uh, that little bed. I've seen it a lot on, on a lot of flight stories. I've never been on a business flight. And I don't think I ever will. But you probably will. You're a UFC flight. You get that bonuses and etc. When you go on to be bigger and better things. But they were on like some beds, and they're like it was just really weird. That 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 could have persuaded you, but you know it, it was very very good. It could, it would persuade me if I was able to have the bed. And I wouldn't be having a cut weight. So if I could go on the business bed and get drunk and you know eat all these snacks, that would be cool. But I wouldn't mm -hmm. really have that luxury. Maybe, maybe you fight a lot. A lot of uh, things what happened recently. A lot of people are fighting uh, just above their weight. We've seen it with uh, Brian Kelleger. He's fighting 145 pounds when he's a 135 pounder. Maybe if we could uh, get you at 145 pounds to get that fight at an Abu Dhabi, just to you know say so you could have them beers and etc. Still, I, I would go overboard. I would still end up missing weight at uh, at one forty five if I was given the luxury of, you know, being able to eat snacks on the way on the way to the fight. So yeah, it, it's yeah. probably a good thing. While, while, we're, while we're on the topic of uh, the weight and the weight cut, I can't, I can't, I've got to ask you, what is it like to get down to one hundred and forty five pounds? Easy, man. Um, you know, in in the beginning part of my career, I I, I didn't have like the nutrition stuff kind of dialed in and, and figured out. Um, but now, man, it, it's such a fucking layup. It's so I, – I don't cut any weight to make 135. I diet all the way down. Um, I get really fat in the off season. I, I typically walk around 165-ish. Um, so right now, um, over 10 weeks out, um, I haven't even started dieting. I'm still eating, you know, Christmas, all that stuff, and I'm sitting around 158. Um, I haven't even started dieting. I haven't started camp, nothing like that. Um, Thankfully, I figured out the whole diet and nutrition and being disciplined. Um, so it's pretty easy for me. I have it very easy compared to a lot of other guys. I could even make 125, um, but we don't want to do that. It's <laughs> silly. The 125, the division at the moment, that's hot enough. Same as the 135 pound division at the moment you're in. There's so many killers in front, like ahead of like you in the rankings. That that top 15 at the moment to get into that top 15, you've got to be a killer. And even to even close that top fifteen, I don't I, feel, I don't even think Sugar Sean O'Malley. I don't think he's ranked. Uh, you got the Rory Burrasos, You got Marab. He's he just got into the rankings. You have so many killers, up and coming killers, that coming into the hundred thirty five pound division at the moment. It's just so interesting to see where that division can go in one or two two years. Maybe we see Davison Figueiredo step up for hundred twenty five. It's just interesting to see where that division goes. And you know, I I can't wait to see you be part of it in a one one year or two years, depending on the, the time frame you take. Yeah, for sure, man. I think I think I'm gonna be in that in that mix, that top 15, 20, 25 mix. Um, I'm probably one big performance away from there, honestly, man. Um, <clears throat> but you, you you mentioned O'Malley. O'Malley's really not. He's not in that top 15 for a reason, and the reason is that he fucking lost. He's not, you know, he's not all that 
all that pizzazz and everything that he thinks he's or every, everything that people make him out to be he's very talented very good um, but he's not like the the reference point for talking about the top 15 there are a lot of other notable guys that deserve to be in that conversation I think O'Malley's name could have very well been replaced in that sentence that you just said with a guy like Ricky Simone or Kelleher or Montel Jackson, all these guys who are extremely fucking talented who just aren't fucking yip yapping and getting all this yeah. all this attention. You know what I mean? Like O'Malley's very good, but he's not the best, and it's shown that he's not the best. He lost via leg kicks, you know. Um, but yeah, man, you made a good point. The the thirty five division is it's so fucking good. Everybody is a killer, especially in that you know that top twenty. Past that barrier is just insane. You guy, you have a guy like. Um, Bar, uh, Heoni Barsolas, yeah. I'm probably butchering his name, and I don't mean any dis any disrespect by it, but that boy is a killer, you know, and he's not even in the mix yet. You know, the the, the division is just, it's it's fucking scary. And you guy, you have a guy like Rob Funk who just completely derailed Marlin in in the first round, you know, oh, and the, Rob was only like the number eleven guy or number twelve guy or thirteen or something like that, and now he just taught, you know, it was one punch away from, you know, now he's ranked number five. Um, there's a lot of moving pieces in the division. The division is just, it, it's scary good, man. It's scary good. Super exciting. Yeah, you said there that uh, Ronnie Barcelos, we probably both butchered the name, but we don't we don't mean no disrespect. But he was meant to fight Marab, who Marab was number 12 in the division, but then the, uh, I think the, the commission didn't allow it. He said he wasn't ranked high enough. But I think he's slated to fight Ascensal now, who's ranked number 9. I think that, yeah, that's the I think, fight. I think that's a... That's a better fight for Barcelos. That's probably mm -hmm. a fight that he more so deserves. And as a fan, that's a much more exciting fight. Yeah, 100%. I can't wait to see that fight. You know, uh, uh, hopefully Marab gets his step-up condition. I think he deserves it as well. But, you know, that's a really good fight. It's, it's, it's uncertain to see where Sensal goes from here, from that big loss to Cody. If he gets on another another loss, you know, how the UFC is going at the moment... The cuts could the cut could come quick, but hopefully it doesn't. Hopefully he gets that win, or maybe against a good guy against Ronnie Barcelos as well. I just I think he's on like a nine fight or six fight win streak in in the in the division, which is crazy to think at the moment. But anyway, we'll move on to your career. We're not here to talk about them. We're here to talk about you, the guy in front of me. Uh, on your first fight in your UFC debut, you know the UFC, you know they gave you Brandon Davis in your first fight, and oh my God, what a way to introduce yourself to the world! A war, a back and forth between you. You almost finished him. I think it was like two occasions in that fight, and uh, he came back. You know he got that rare naked choke. But you know what can you learn from that experience in your UFC debut? Man, I, I learned. I, I'm still. I don't really even view that as a loss, just because all the lessons I learned from it. You know, I was only four and zero going into that fight. Um, prior to Brandon, you know, a couple months prior, I just fought some some guy on the local scene. Prior to me, Brandon was fighting um, Zabit. You know, that's a yeah. that's a pretty cool thing for me to be just coming into the scene and fighting him on short notice. Um, Brandon doesn't get enough credit as as he probably deserves. That boy, he can fight. He can fucking fight. Um, I learned a lot. I learned a lot about myself in that fight. I learned a lot about myself as a fighter, as, as a man, as a person. Um, I, I got up. I dust myself off. I didn't feel bad for myself. I moved on. I, I trucked forward. I took it on the chin. I was. I was. I, I had a great attitude the entire time. And, and and most of all, man, I had so much fucking fun. I had so much fun. You no, know, I had. You know, I had four four pro fights. So I had seven fights before Brandon, and I had never been punched in the face in a fight. I got hit in that fight, I got rocked in that fight, and I, I actually learned that I, I can fight. You know, pro I was going in there on the local scene, I was just hitting guys and they would fall. I just touch them, they would fall. Touch them, and they would fall. Never even being challenged, never being contested. Brandon challenged me. He made me actually like dig deep and kind of learn about myself. I got rocked in that fight, and I was, I was seeing like six of them at one time. It was just fucking so <laughs> much fun. Um, but man, it was... I learned a lot more in that fight about myself than I have in any other... any kind of win that I've had, any... Any other kind of uh, event in my life that I had, I learned a lot about myself in that fight, and I think it showed that you know in the set and then the fight right after that game, first round knockout at home, for the next fight after that, another fucking head kick knockout in 40 seconds, you know. So I, I learned a lot about that fight. If I had not granted out the way, I probably wouldn't have progressed as a person as much as I have so far because he made me actually dig deep into myself and. And learn or figure out what I needed to do to, to not feel that or not have that feeling again, you know? Yeah, 100%. I just said that, you know, he's a credible guy, you know, and before that he was fighting as a beat, you know, they, they, get, they usually gave you no favors in that matchup. On short notice as well, he's an absolute killer. 
And uh, unfortunately, for since then, Davis, he, he, I think he had been cut from the UFC. I think he's two and zero in twenty twenty on the on the regional scene. So he's get, you know hopefully get works to get back to that contract, get back to the UFC, and hopefully you two can meet again one day and we can you can run it back and you get that O back. That lost. Yeah, I mean, I I, I think uh, Davis and I are, are super friendly. We talk pretty often actually. I think he's he's gonna get back in the UFC, man. He uh he lost one fight right after me, and then he. What I think he took a, a, a pretty silly decision as a last minute replacement all the way in Germany to fight, or Germany or, or Amsterdam or something like that to fight Giga and ended up losing to Giga. Um, a split decision. I don't though. think that was. So, a, so one judge 41. Yeah. Yeah, man. I, I don't think that was like a. Um, I don't think that was the smartest decision based mm -hmm. on the on where he was in his career. Um, but, man, he can fucking fight. He'll be back, man. He's he's just killing every. He's, he's 2 0 already on the local scene. He's going to. He's like probably another two or three win or one or two wins away from getting back to the show, especially with the landscape and how the UFC is right now with COVID, uh, this, that, the other thing. But man, he's super fucking exciting too. You know, when Brandon fights, it's not a cuddling match. It's not a stupid fight. He goes out there and he, he fights. So he'll he'll be back a thousand one hundred percent. He'll be back. Yeah, I, I agree with you. you know, with the, as you said there, with the UFC, how it is at the moment. Oh Jesus, that's a big bottle. <laughs> That is a large ball, but <laughs> with the, how the UFC is uh, matching now with the, the COVID and all that, the, you know, the, the, there's definitely going to be a short notice fight for Brandon in the future. A lot of people have fallen out recently. If he keeps his weight low, stays sharp, uh, a call's going to come his way, hundred percent, thousand percent, thousand percent. So you said that you don't like fighting the fight the night bonuses because. You have to get punched in the face, but you know you got a bonus in your, your debut, if I'm correct. Um, no, I, we didn't get a, we, what? Man, fuck yeah, no, I know, man, I know. But you know, you know what, dude? We got we got fucked. We got fucked because <laughs> we we were the first fight. We said it was a fucking wicked wicked good fight, right? The rest of the card was boring, and then you have Gastelum versus Izzy, and then Max Aww. versus Justin. There was no chance. There was no chance. Yeah, I remember now. It was a uh, was it UFC two was it two fights six thirty six yeah thirty yeah, six yeah. Uh, yeah the the UFC I mean they st they still gave us like a little you know locker room bonus if you will it wasn't <laughs> fifty grand but it was it was a nice gesture of course it was a great gesture yeah. especially I just came on the, on the scene they didn't you know they don't owe me anything so it was it was cool the UFC took care of us um, but it was fun man it was a great experience I loved every fucking second of it. Yeah, so you said you don't like the fighting note bonuses, but you know, because uh, you have to get punched in the face. Is that, look, looking back on that fight with Davis, did that kind of put you off uh, moving on in the like moving on in the future that you don't want to get punched in the face? You want to go in there, hit them, hit them clean, knock them out. Um, no, man, that's just me being stupid. I don't, really, I don't really give a fuck. It, I mean, you don't feel anything in the fight anyway. Um, but ideally, you would want to go and have a performance. Um, that kind of resembles my last performance where I went in I didn't get punched at all and you know I threw like two or three shots and then the fight was over that's the, that's an ideal performance um, a fight of the night I'm sure is is inevitable eventually after the war I'm eventually gonna have putts and banged up and this that the other thing um, but we're gonna try to delay that as long as possible for sure <laughs> you'll keep that face pretty for your wife <laughs> I fucking, yeah, man, I don't want that shit all over my face. I want the way that is right now. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Um, so we'll move on. Uh, so after you lost to Davis, you know, you got two fights, two finishes. Was it important for you, for yourself, you know, to bounce back in an impressively, impressive way? Um, I wouldn't say it was... It, of course it was important, but, <clears throat> like, I guess any any winning in any kind of way would have been... You know, it would have been acceptable for me, you know, to, to bounce back and get two back-to-back -back wins. But with that, I proved to myself that not only can I hang with the best in the world, I can compete with the best in the world, and I can beat some of the best in the world. Um, so that was definitely cool, and it was definitely cool to, you know, to bring all the hype that I had from the local scene into the UFC. Because in the local scene, I had all this hype that I was, you know, really good, and I was knocking people out, this, that, the other thing. And then I went to Brandon, and Brandon choked me out. So it kind of... You know, you have a slice of humble pie. Everyone starts questioning: Is he really that good, or is he just kind of like a a hometown hero, or is he like a really kind of you know a, a can crusher, you know, whatever. Um, yeah. But then I showed it against legit competition on the on the highest stage that I can show it, and back to back times coming out unscathed and both in the first round in under two and a half minutes. Um, so 
that was really cool for sure because I kind of shut a lot of people up that you know that were kind of questioning my abilities which they had every right to question my abilities and I kind of brought some new people on on board saying you know I am kind of the real deal I can hang and I'm going to be you know a contender eventually you know so but but the, the big thing with me is that I want to be you know I want to be must see TV I want to be one of those guys that people always tune in to watch fight that you know if Randy Cost is fighting there's going to be a fun fight happening win or lose there's going to be it's going to be very exciting you know what I mean that that's that's the big thing for me I don't care win or lose or I care about having fun and, and fighting for something that's bigger than myself and and just kind of growing my stock and making my name relevant and, and, and just kind of building my own brand you know mm -hmm. Like a, like a Justin Gaethje, for example, you know, when he fights, everyone wants to tune in. He's always in a firefight. And recently, he's kind of paced himself down, slowed it down. But after the, lo the loss against Habib, he said he's going to return back to... Since he said that he had, like, five or six wars, he hasn't had a war. But now, he, it looks like he's going to return back to that war. Whoever he gets next in his next fight, uh, I reckon he's going to, you know, bring it. But uh, what I'm trying to say is that you, you want to, like, make his name like his. He isn't even like a... A few fights in the UFC or, uh, um, already, and he's like huge. Everyone wants to watch him. As soon as he fights, Justin Gaethje's fighting. You're watching. Like it, it doesn't matter what card it is. If Justin Gaethje's on that card, you're gonna watch. You want to build it kind of something up like that. Exactly. Or even or even guys that aren't as big, like a, maybe like a Shane Burgos or a Hakeem Dawudu or you know one of these guys who they're not really household names just yet, but you know that if they're fighting, it's probably gonna be fucking exciting. Yeah, or like a Karma Worthy or Altman uh, Azatar, so, someone like that. They they bring fire. Someone, to the... yeah, just a spicy name to yeah. add to a card. Like you can put you can put the name on any card, and it, and it's gonna produce you know butts and seeds. It's gonna people are gonna <laughs> want to watch that. Fight. Yeah, you kind of uh, touched up on your last fight there. You landed that head kick. Uh, that must have felt sweet when you landed it. You know, for someone who personally did that, you know, hit him with hit him with that head kick, knocked him out. Uh, how did it? How did that feel with it when it landed? Did you know when it landed, it was over? Yeah, man. That, that, you know, I don't have many fights in the UFC or uh, many fights. Period. But in every single fight that I've ever had, I've landed a head kick. I have now two head kick knockouts. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I knew I knew what it's like to have it land. I knew what it's like, but. So I had I had a head kick knockout um, my second pro fight. Yeah, yeah. It was eleven seconds, so it was 30, 30 seconds shorter. Um, but it was the it was the same setup, but from the opposite stance. So when I knocked Journey out, that was from the southpaw stance. Um, when I, on the local scene, when I had a head kick knockout, it was from a orthodox stance. Um, so they both had the same tendencies and, and kind of things like that. But I noticed as soon as the head kick lands, the eyes roll back immediately because it, it's a fucking head kick. Um, so I knew the fight was over. I, de I definitely didn't expect it to come that quick, um, but it, w it was just so cool to see all to to see because I man, I, that that was the most comfortable I've been in, in a cage from, you know. I now have more experience. I was my ninth fight, uh, no crowd. I was very comfortable in there, so I could see everything in live action. Nothing was bl like blurry and crazy and whirlwindy. Um, so I could see that I knew I knew as soon as I made that step over that I was gonna I was gonna land the head kick. It was the inevitable. I could fucking see that happening. It, it was just so fucking cool, man. Like, you know, because it, it, it was big for me. I hadn't fought in eleven months. Um, I had just won, won by knockout in what you could consider was fluky. You know, it was a lucky punch, whatever it may be. But there was fucking nothing lucky about that head kick. Um, it was so it was just so cool, man. My girlfriend was in my corner, you know, so she was fucking right there and she could see the knockout and then you know to top it all off you get a you get a nice little bonus coming off of, you know, a pretty shitty year having, you know, all this COVID stuff and the world being locked down and a fight cancellation. It was just nice to have all the hard work pay off tenfold, literally and I guess metaphorically. Uh, Mike Perry's girlfriend's got some competition then. <laughs> yeah, she we got we have the old the OG fucking corner the corner uh team over here, that's for sure. Yeah, has she got more experience than uh, I think her name's Latori? Fucking probably less, dude. She does. She doesn't know a thing about fighting. <laughs> <laughs> the thing. Just watch it. Just watch it. But you know, so so with so the reason that she was in my corner is because obviously all the COVID stuff. You you yeah. can't bring other people. Like normally, I would have her there with me during fight week, and and everything would be the same except when I go to fight, she would go hang out with my parents to watch the fight. Except now, you can only bring your corners and coaches. So I had to make a decision. Obviously, I'm gonna to want to have my girlfriend with me because, you know, fight week is hard. There are a lot of emotions, so it's just nice to have like an anchor. Um, 
I'm just happy I didn't get fucking clean clocked and knocked out right in front of her. That would have fucking sucked, but it, it was best case scenario for sure. Across the board, best case scenario. Uh, what, did she give you any corner advice? You know, did she shout out in mid corner? Uh, oh, she no, can't. She can't I mean, say anything to you in round two because you didn't make it to round two. But did she shout anything out? Uh, or before the fight, did she shout anything out? Um, no, I was like, I was like super calm, so I wasn't like bugging out and like looking uh -huh. for advice or anything like that from anybody. Um, but I do remember, uh, like right before, like Bruce Buffer announced my name and I'm drinking my water. She said something like, "All right, it's go time," or "Let's get it," or something along the lines of that. But it wasn't like she was fucking. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna give her credit for the head kick. She calls for the head kick. She she said the exact combination. So we'll give her that credit. Did she actually? <laughs> No. <laughs> oh, no, you, you almost got me fooled no. there for a sec. No, but it'll it sound cool, no, it'll be cool, it'll sound cool. Yeah, so, so you'll want to know, is that the first time you have, your girlfriend's ever been in your corner? Yeah, 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 it is the first time. I'm 1-0 with my girlfriend in my corner, yeah. Is that, is that a lucky so, yeah, song, maybe? Hopefully we're going to be 2-0 on March 6th. Oh, is that the plan to get her in your corner again? Yeah, man. Unless unless COVID changes everything, and you know she she uh, she'll be able to come with me during fight week. But mm -hmm. that that's a non-negotiable. She she's gonna be there during fight week. So if she has the corner, then she has the corner. Uh, did did she sit and watch the fight with your coaches, and or does she like kind of turn away, or does she sit there and watch you? Well, you know what's you know what's wicked funny is is when I'm getting wrapped up. Um, Joe Joe Lozon is is one of my oh, head man, coaches. What a so coach. Joe's like. Joe's like, I, uh, he's like, are you gonna be pissed if we do something funny? I'm like, no, nah, just like tell me what it is right now. He was like, all right, so if we goes to the second round, we're gonna give her the water bucket and we're gonna walk away and we're gonna send her in. <laughs> he's not gonna know what the fuck to do. I'm like, dude, do it. That'll be so funny. But yeah, man, uh, it worked out good that we didn't have to get to that situation. Um, I got out in one piece. I wasn't cut up or anything. Um, it was best case scenario for sure. Yeah, yeah, that would that would be uh, very funny to see that she just comes walking in <laughs> with the water bucket, not knowing what to do. What what would what fucking would you clueless. think? Doesn't know what to say. Would probably forget the fucking my chair. It would just it would just be funny. If that was if that did happen and Lozon did walk out, your girlfriend walked in. What do you reckon the words would be? The first things to come out of my mouth to tell you to do. <laughs> <laughs> she would she wouldn't know what to say but like she wouldn't have a choice right because you have the camera on you uh -huh. and if they walk away you can't just fucking say no and panic right because you're on you're on TV right so she would have to and I would probably just be fucking laughing yeah it's better than the it would probably be better than my Perry's girlfriend I'm not too sure if you saw it but there was like the in corner I think she was like go on baby you can do it yeah, stuff yeah, like that baby. but yeah, <laughs> that that was uh, a yeah, uh, quite funny. A bit. I think uh, he's actually got a, a corner now. I said. I think he put on his Instagram recently that he's got a team, getting a team together. He's got some coaches, so it's good to see that he's getting his life life together now. And you know, kind of fixing what he needs to get fixed. He needs to get a team. You know, he needs some. You know, kind of um, direction in his fights. I feel like when he fights, he's just going out there, get, doing what he's doing, like getting what he's used to. Going off like reaction, you know, uh, instant reaction. Uh, I just feel like he needs that team to send him to a, the right direction, give him a game plan, tell him where to take the fight, etc., etc. But you know, hopefully, the, you know, gets get that together. He's got a right team now. But anyway, we're talking about you, as I said there. Your next assignment uh, is against Trevin Jones. You know, he recently tested positive for I think it was mar marijuana, if I'm correct. Yeah, man, he fuck. It's so fucking stupid. It was. Yeah. You know, actually, my last opponent, same thing. Uh, quick knockout. Uh, in Texas, and then he had an overturn for marijuana. I'm one and zero against uh, guys that fail for marijuana tests. Uh, hopefully, we can keep this streak going. But my man, I feel I feel bad for him, dude. Like, I'm glad the I'm glad the UFC made made it right with Trevin and and gave him the the bonus that he definitely fucking deserved. Um, yeah, it's it's stupid, man. It's so fucking stupid. I just like every single other person on the fucking roster reaps the benefits of marijuana especially during a during a training camp and and that guy took it on like you know two two days notice or something stupid he's mm -hmm. one to know in the ufc with, with a knockout as far as i'm concerned i you have to give credit where it's due and, and that's what he did especially you know he was taking a beat you know he was taking a beating up until that point so it's it's all fucking stupid i i, I root i root for the guy in, in uh in terms or, or in that in that respect for sure um, that's all fucking stupid for, uh, to me. It doesn't make any fucking sense. 
Yeah, one hundred percent. He against Timu Valuev. If, I don't know whether I, how to pronounce that name, whether, I, whether I've corrected that properly. But against Timu Valuev, it, as you said, they were taking a beating until round three. Land some huge punches and finishes the fight. He was a huge underdog in that fight. No one gave him a hair to win that fight, and he goes in there and just you know put some you know finishes him with punches in round three. I, I can imagine the power that he has, the power that you have. I'm thinking of this matchup, and I'm yeah, I'm losing my mind. Like you, you, you both, I, I imagine that you're gonna stand, you know, you're gonna stand with him. Is that the fight that, that you're gonna want? You're gonna stand on the stand on the feet with him. You're gonna strike with him. Well, I can tell you, you're not gonna go out there. I mean, you're not gonna see me go out there and pull guard. I can tell you that. I'm not <laughs> fucking pull guard. I'm gonna go out there. I'm gonna throw. I'm gonna throw bombs. That's that's all there is to it. And he, that's that's well known. I think it's very well known with him too. Um, yeah. He shows up to fight, dude. That's a that's a. <clears throat> that's a, a very fan friendly style a fan friendly matchup for sure a thousand percent you have a guy in myself who has a lot of power you have a guy like him who has a lot of power you have a guy like him who who, who can take damage right so it's it's a it's a recipe for for a very fun fight um i guess you could probably assume that someone's probably going to get knocked out this fight um could be me could be him but it's it's a hundred percent going to be fireworks right i mean He's he's a super exciting guy, super durable, super super technical, super um, talented. You know he has, he has great great ground game, good wrestling, um, good boxing, good kicks, um, and you can you can say all those same things about me. Um, it's it's gonna be a fun fight. You know I'm excited to mix it up. He's he's very formidable opponent. Uh, not many people know his name uh, unless you know about you know the whole thing about him coming back. I bet more people know the story than they know his name. Mm -hmm. um, about him getting beat up and then throwing, you know, that that bomb check hook and knocking the kid out. Um, it's it's a, it's gonna be a fun fight, dude. It, that that's that's really all there is to it. I think they they're putting us on this card for a reason. It's a two fifty nine. It's gonna be a big card. It's already shaping up to be a very exciting card. Uh, I'm excited for the challenge, dude. He's a, he's a, he's a tough kid. He's he's coming in there with, with with a lot to prove. I'm coming with a lot to prove. Uh, this is my first fight on on my new contract. I'm coming off a a knockout. Performance of the night bonus, as is he. Um, it's gonna be cool, man. I'm ex I'm excited for the for the fight. I'm excited for the for the hard task that I have in front of me. Um, make no mistake, though, I'm I'm coming for the fucking knockout. That's for fucking sure. I'm gonna be looking to knock him out, as I'm sure he's gonna be looking to knock me out. It's gonna be a fun fight. I can't wait. Um, March sixth is gonna be fun, dude. That's it. I can't wait. Is that is that you said that you're looking for the knockout? Is that how you win this fight? Um. I'm gonna win this fight by Uwe Plata. That's how I'm gonna win this fight. Ah, nah, you're, you're no, pulling my leg. Yeah. Fucking, I'm not winning this fucking fight by Uwe Plata, dude. I'm going for the knockout. That's for sure. Oh, well, you said that you're not winning this fight by Uwe Plata. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna put a bet on that. You know, I'm gonna. You said it. You know. <laughs> Don't put your bet on that. What was it? He's he's good, man. He's he's like mm -hmm. he's like a black belt too. Uh, no gi world champion. Um, he's tough, dude. He's he can fight. That's I mean, you, you don't you don't get layup fights in the UFC. Um, I, I'm excited for the challenge, you know. I'm excited to mix it up. He's a good. He's a southpaw. That's another tricky thing. He is. He's throwing a lot of curveballs at me, dude. It's gonna be it's gonna be a fun fight. Mm -hmm. It sounds like you've uh, watched a lot of tape on him and you've studied him quite a lot. You you, you said that he's a he's a black belt nogi. You know, he's um. You've mentioned what he's good at. <laughs> With why are you watching tape on him? You know, how do you expect him to come in fight night? Do you expect him to come in throwing bombs? Maybe look for that takedown. You said there he's got good wrestling. Maybe maybe look for your legs and take you down because he might not want to stand and trade with you because you've got bombs. How do you expect him to come in fight night? I'm not. I'm not really sure, man. I mean, you don't really ever know until you until you're in there. I could go out there and sting him with a jab, and then you know he could be hunting at my legs, or he can go out there and he could catch me with a head kick right off the bat, and then he could be wanting to make a stand-up match. Uh, and I could be shooting for the takedowns. Who knows? I mean, it's a it's a fist fight. There are so many crazy variables, you know. Um, I'm sure he. I I know that he probably has respect for me as as a martial artist, as a fighter, because because of how I'm how my fights have gone. Um, I know he he probably knows that he has he has a tough task ahead of him. Um, I'm sure he's pretty confident in his abilities, as am I. Um, I don't really care what his game plan is, and I'm sure he doesn't really give a fuck about my game plan. Uh, one thing that we both give a fuck about is that we both show up on March 6th with the best Randy Cost and best Trevin Jones, and we put on the best show to make the most money that we can for each other. That's we're we're business partners at this point. It's gonna be a good fight. Go get another bonus. 
I hope so, man. That'll be nice. And an extra fifty k would definitely wouldn't suck. That'd be nice. Mm -hmm. Well, if you got the bonus that night, uh, what, what would what would you spend that on? Uh, I'd probably take about a quarter of it and spend it on Reese's peanut butter cups. <laughs> Oh, come on. <laughs> what, what, what would you really spend that on? A new car? Maybe maybe a, a new house? Apartment? No, man. I, I, don't, I don't spend a lot of my money. I, I'm pretty conservative with my money. I like to <clears throat> put all my money away. And then I like to travel a lot. I like to go on a lot of vacations. Uh, Come to I, London. I like, um, what's that? Come to London. Come to London. I would like to go to London if this COVID shit dies down and when the weather warms up oh, a little yeah. bit. But yeah, man, I, 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 put, I put the money away and go on... You know, go on vacations. I don't want a new car. I don't want a fucking house. I don't want to, you know, I don't care about all that stuff. I, I, the, the, to me, like, the, the, the money doesn't doesn't define, like, wealth. It's the happiness and, the, and, like, the experiences and the memories that you make. You know, I don't care about how many zeros are in my account. I care about how many fucking smiles I have on my face. You know, yeah. I don't really give a fuck about any of that sexy stuff and material stuff. I just want to be happy. <laughs> I want to be healthy. I want to have enough, enough food to eat and enough candy to fucking eat. That's it. I love it. I love it. You, have you ever been to the to the UK? I have never been to the UK, man. But that's that's definitely on the list. But it's so hard, especially right now with with mm. all the COVID shit and you know the UK is is fucking insane with all the, the restrictions. They're like way way upside down. They're shutting everything down. Um, yeah, yeah. But that, that'd be cool, man. That that would that would be a cool place to visit for sure. I have I have um some connects over there from from out here in Florida that that live in London, and so it'd be cool. Yeah, but yeah. We'll see. I wish we could swap uh, lives for a day. Currently, it's uh, pitch black here, raining down, really cold. I can see that sun shining through on your face, and it's making me so upset. Yeah, man, fuck that. That's I mean, that, you know, at home in, in Massachusetts too, you know, or in Boston where my family is right now, it's they're they're talking about what's a sixty mile an hour winds on Christmas, Sam. Oh damn. Sixty mile an hour. Yeah, it's it's gonna be like. Yeah, rain, rain and 60 miles an hour winds at home for Christmas. Like, fuck that, dude. I want to go to the beach. That's a proper Christmas for me. You know, so winds, snow, rain. <laughs> that's a Christmas for me. You know, I need to get yeah, myself up to Boston. Christmas for everybody, right? Yeah. All right, last question before I let you go so you can spend some quality time with your girlfriend. is uh, January 23rd. i I, I got to ask you, you know, Dustin Poirier versus Conor, Conor McGregor in the main event. How does that one play out in your eyes? It's going to be a completely different fight as uh, as the first one, I think. Especially, you know, Dustin got hit on the side of the head last time, and you you talk about the the, the extra ten pounds, this, that, the other thing. Well, all those are real things. Um, I think it is going to be a different result. I think we're going to see a much wiser each fighter. Um, I'm not really sure who's going to win, um, but it's not going to be a first round knockout. It's not going to be a second round knockout in either direction. I think if the fight ends, it's going to be in the third round or the fourth round. Uh, I'm not really sure who, uh, but I'm going to root for my man DP. I think I, I want I want Poirier to pull it off. I, I think I'm with you. You know, with the first fight, you know, DP, you know, young in his career, obviously was young in his career. He's fought loads of people before that, and since then he's gone on an absolute tremendous streak. Since that lone loss to Michael Johnson, and then unfortunately against Habib, but if you lo everyone loses to Khabib at the moment, like there's no shame on that loss. Like, come on. And his boxing oh, since the first fight, oh my god, Dustin's boxing right now is absolutely off the charts. He's probably one of the best boxers I've seen in the UFC from recent years. And I feel like if it con if, if it's on the feet, it, it, it could be a trade, it could be, you know, a, a, I take one, you take one, etc. Like, I think this is a really equal fight on the feet, and I think people are kind of underestimating uh, uh, Poirier's boxing skills on the feet. It's going to be a really, really good fight. But nonetheless, I think Conor's going to come in much better shape. A bit, you know, much better and more desire. Now Habib's out of his division. I feel like he's going to come in more motivated unless Habib comes back. Whatever they're going to talk about, you know, the, I think Dana and Habib are going to have a meeting, something like that. But, you know, I feel like he's going to come in more motivated after that loss. We're going to see a much better Connor. But I feel like Dustin Poirier is on that feet and that ground game as well. Every time you shoot on him, that guillotine, he gets that guillotine in somewhere. But, you know, I feel like it's going to be a really, really good fight, a good firefight between the two, and I can't wait to see a matchup. Yeah, man, I agree 100. percent I, I think that uh, that that Dustin overall has the better the better mixed martial arts skills. I think Connor probably has more weapons on the feet, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you're the better stand up fighter. That just means you have more tricky and pizzazz, which which is great. Um, gr I mean, I guess a great comparison was you had Cheeto and Sean O'Malley. Sean O'Malley had all these great spin kicks, all this that the other thing. 
takes one kick. You never really know. I'm not saying I'm not comparing both of those fighters to each other because obviously they're light years ahead. Um, but I'm, I'm I'm just saying that the, the the more weapons doesn't necessarily mean that they're the better fighter or the person that's going to win. I'm excited for a fun fight, man. I'm gonna I'm rooting for Poirier though for sure. You, it's it's too hard not to get behind that guy. Yeah, hundred percent. Well, I, I'll let you go. You know, I'll go let you go. Spend the rest of the day with your girlfriend. Whatever you do after this, I hope you have fun. And uh, I'm speaking soon after your next fight, hopefully uh, against um, uh, Trevor jo uh, Trevor Jones, hopefully. All right, brother. Merry Christmas. Thank you for having me on. Oh, yeah. Really and a Merry Christmas. I hope you have a, a happy Merry Christmas and a new year. Uh, 2021. I hope 2021 is good for you and your family. You as well, brother. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you.